This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight now, we bring you a discussion on the Ryasena Dialogue and its significance. The participants are Professor Harish V. Pant, Vice President, Studies and Foreign Policy, ORF, and Simran Sodhi, Journalist. Today we are discussing the 7th edition of the Ryasena Dialogue. We have Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurating the Ryasena Dialogue and we also have the EU Commission President who is here for the dialogue. We also see that the Raisina Dialogue has achieved the status today of being this primary dialogue which reaches out to various countries and also provides India with a global platform to articulate its views. Professor Pant, when you see the success, and this is the seventh edition we are seeing of the dialogue, how do you look at it looking backwards and also taking a look forward? Well, I think, uh, you know, Raisina Dialogue has certainly allowed India, has been a way for India to put its point of view across to the world at large. World that is changing rapidly, is evolving rapidly. There are new threat perceptions. There are new opportunities. And I think before Raisina, there was always this vacuum that India's voice, you know, was often not heard beyond official statements. And I think this platform like Raisina allows a, you know India to engage with its partners in a much more freewheeling manner in an intellectual sense of uh, figuring out uh, what sort of uh, challenges are there and how those challenges can be converted into opportunities it allows India to work with its partners uh, to figure out uh, you know convergences and there are divergences to mend those divergences or to articulate them in a manner that allows the conversation to go forward so I think what the Raisina Dialogue has given India is a unique voice on the global platform across different sets of audiences, not simply government officials, but also public policy space, media, international organizations. So it has been, uh, in, in my opinion, a good uh, success story where India's views are now articulated and uh, received by the world at large. Looking forward, I think the challenge for India remains that in a world that is getting increasingly segmented, can India, can Raisina Dialogue as a platform become that space where different viewpoints can continue to converge? And this is why I think if you see the, the issue of Ukraine, India is in a unique position where you know Russians are also invested in India's relationship and uh, Western countries are, too are invested. So I think for Raisina to reflect Indian foreign policy aspirations, which are rising by the day, and that is going to be the challenge going forward. But I think Raisina has done, as a platform, has done a good job so far. Professor Pant, as you mentioned, that this also gives us India a forum where you discuss the convergences and the divergences. As you mentioned, the Ukraine crisis we see is also a point where India has maintained its stand, and we have the European Union and the US, which has taken a different stand. Do you believe that the, the three-day Raisina dialogue and the various sessions we have will always also help explain India's viewpoint and the nuances on the Ukraine crisis to a very global audience? Absolutely. I think, you know, if you look at the agenda, there are a number of sessions that delve into this theme directly and indirectly. Whether you're looking at the debate on changing global order, whether you're looking at the debate on energy, whether you're looking at the debate on Russia and uh, Central Asia, and whether you're looking at the, the session on Europe and what Europe's geopolitical agenda is or how it is shaping up. So I think there are a number of sessions which allow India's point of view to be put forth, as, and as you point out, in a nuanced manner, uh, because you know India, as I was mentioning earlier, it continues to occupy a pivotal and a unique position in global discourse. You look at the stream of visitors we have had in recent days, and in fact, today, as part of Raisina, and there are eight or nine um, leaders of the world from Europe. There are foreign ministers from across European countries. Of course, the uh, new president is inaugurating the chief guest. Wanderlein is, uh, Ms. Wanderlein is the chief guest. So, you know, you have Europe represented, you have Russia represented, which, is, which can only happen in today's context in India. And I think that is what uh, perhaps the strength that India is signifying and the ability to have civilized discussion on topics where we might disagree with each other. So I think uh, that space is available and Raisina Dialogue certainly gives that space to our partners, to our friends. And uh, in a world, again, the, you know, that is getting so much, the fragmentation is so high. India remains 
you know, a beacon of hope. And in that context, uh, Raisina Dialogue allows India's point of view to be articulated robustly, to be articulated in a nuanced manner, and to be articulated to a range of audiences. And I think that is what exactly is going to happen over the course of the next three days on this issue of Ukraine, which is at the moment occupying so much of the global diplomatic capital. Professor Pant, we also see that the uh, spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs said that the Raisina Dialogue 2022 will have around 100 sessions with over 200 speakers from 90 countries. There will be side events that will be hosted in Berlin and Washington. The Raisina Young Fellows Program will also be conducted on the sidelines of this main conference. And as you pointed out, the three-day dialogue will also be attended by former prime ministers, by foreign ministers from almost all parts of the world. Do you feel that this also gives India a platform to finally come up as a global power? Because we have also seen and we have discussed this many a time that if you look at the UN, for instance, especially the P5 and the UNSC structure, India's rightful place is yet to be given to it. And with a country with a population like ours and a rising economy, the voice needs to be globally given its right position. Do you believe that direction is helped by the Raisina Dialogue? Yes, indeed. I think uh, one of the foremost attributes of a modern 21st century global power is the ability to shape the global narrative. And I think uh, India, because we did not have a platform like Raisina till six years back, this platform allows us to shape the global narrative and to impress upon it the need for the world to look at India differently. And I think that's what it, its main contribution is in some ways, that we have allowed or we are allowing or creating a platform where through which India's voice could be projected, through which India's narrative could be projected. Sometimes India is misunderstood. We know, for example, on issues, even on Ukraine, there is a lot of misunderstanding about the kind of uh, energy, for example, energy trade with India. And then we saw how uh, our foreign minister, Jay Shankar, reacted to it when he was in the U.S. When he was asked about India's energy trade, and India hardly has any energy trade with Soviet Union, with, with, sorry, with Russia, and it, it's less than 1%. But certainly, you know, the narrative that, that is usually set by certain media houses, by global media, the narrative suggested that, you know, India is buying and, and, uh, and, and oil from Russia and therefore it is allowing Russia to conduct these military operations and so on and so forth. Very exaggerated uh, sense of what is happening. And I think at a number of levels, India needs to project a voice, which is a voice of sanity, which is a voice of moderation, which is a voice which talks of balancing and which is a voice which uh, with at multiple points wants to interact in a world to be shaped by international standards. So I think that is the role that a platform like Raisina Dialogue can play. Professor Pant, we also see that the Raisina Dialogue 2022 has six thematic pillars, rethinking democracy in terms of trade, technology and ideology, end of multilateralism, water caucuses, and achieving green transitions. And there are other themes around which the dialogue will be based. My question to you is on the end of multilateralism. How far do you think is the discussion today, especially when we look at what is happening in the world and we look at the Russia-Ukraine crisis, how far do you think does this theme buy into what we see in the world today, what we see in the global events unfolding today? You know, the whole the global order as it is evolving at the moment hinges on extreme degree of uh, fragmentation. And uh, you have great power contestation rising. You have major power conflict rising. We are witnessing in Ukraine. We are witnessing China's rise in our vicinity, which is challenging, you know, the way a regional order in the Indo-Pacific works. So it's very natural that multilateral institutions, the idea of multilateralism that came about uh, after the uh, end of the Second World War, uh, will also come under stress, will also come under challenge. And I think in some ways, we are witnessing different kind of a multilateral order, you know, which is more ad hoc, more flexible, more issue based, and uh, that is, you know, shaping for a lot of, uh, you know, of this generation, the idea, of, you know, what kind of a global order we are entering into. So when we say end of multilateralism, uh, the idea is to make a case for reformed multilateralism, which India has been espousing. Multilateralism remains an important pivot for Indian foreign policy and for global order.
but multilateralism of the kind that we have become used to is now coming to an end so how do we manage those you know those fault lines how do we manage those challenges that is i think very important from the point of view of india but i think it is also important from the point of view of lots of small countries relatively weak countries that become victims of brute power politics at times of major powers so i think multilateralism the idea remains valid but i think how it is being interposed in today's global order that is the challenge so how do we manage this multilateral order what kind of challenges are coming in the multilateral order that is part of rai sina is devoted to that and uh, how do you reform multilateralism how do you reform multilateral order so that powers big and small can partake in global public good those questions remain important to what we are witnessing across the world and i think india is in a unique position to make that argument about a reform multilateralism and as you were mentioning earlier this is something that uh, you know india has not been given its due on the multilateral order itself the un security council does not have india as, as a prominent member a country like india and that is something that india needs to highlight and call for a reformed set of multilateral framework that perhaps better respond to 21st century challenges Professor Pant, very briefly, if you were to point out three areas which you think India should focus on, and these are the three areas which India should try to communicate to the global community through the Vaisina dialogue, what are those three focus areas which is important for India to communicate at this point of time? I think if you are talking of three areas, you know, I would say the first, perhaps the most important one, is how important a role India is playing. in managing and maintaining the existing rules of the game in the system you know we have seen a lot of countries rising china is rising for example but it is rising through a process of decimation it is disrupting the you know the global order at the moment whereas india is also rising but rising in a manner that you know through the logic of what it has could to become the idea that india should partake the benefits of the global order by taking everyone along and i think that's a message that india has conveyed during covid by supplying covid vaccines by supplying other health support to its neighbors and far flung countries and that's a message that is embedded in india's response to humanitarian crises to wars to famines to its engagement to with the smaller countries that you know india wants to see a world where power is not the sole metric of uh, global influence so i think that is one aspect that one would hope through platforms like raisina one can way the other is of course the idea of what kind of a world we want to live in and a sustainable resilient where the poorest of the poor countries are equally able to sustain themselves and are able to have access to global public goods you know this is something that again india showed uh, by standing up to uh, when it talked of intellectual property rights waiver on covid vaccine we are fighting a case in the wto for for that against the west and that is to support the poorest of the poor countries so i think the, the voice of the marginalized the voice of the poor countries the voice of the weak countries and how that those voices should be projected into the global order and finally i would say that uh, you know what india perhaps can should be focusing more on is what i have talked about earlier is narrative building and of course the icena dialogue is one such platform but india needs to do it much more vigorously as i see that dialogue happens once a year but throughout the year india needs to be making the case that uh, india's role in global politics india's foreign policy approach is linked to its own internal domestic developmental aspirations and those aspirations are linked to the wider global good we indians and uh, in indian government does not self as challenging the global order So I think uh, you know those are the few points that I would like to underscore. And in the coming days, we will continue our discussions on the Raisina dialogue and the various sessions and themes that come up. With these comments, we bring today's discussion to an end. Thank you. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on the Raisina dialogue and its significance. The participants were Professor Harsh V. Pant, Vice President, Studies and Foreign Policy, ORF, and Simran Sodhi, Journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com.